A special rebroadcast for the American Armed Forces and their allies. You're invited to drop in where the elite meet to eat. Duffy's Tavern. Hello, Duffy's where the elite meet to eat. Hot to man just speaking. Duffy ain't here. Hello, Duffy. Uh, tonight, uh, Idol of Pino. Huh? Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Got him where she needs him. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, what the uh, English would refer to as a ripping tomato. <laughs> yeah, she's got the uh, histrionic talent, too. Uh, Ever since she was a little trike. Huh? <laughs> yeah, her family has been in the acting racket for over 500 years. Huh? Even before Eddie Cantor. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, I'm dramatizing my book, uh, Duffy's First Reader for the movies. Huh? Well, I want to get it done in a hurry, Duffy, before the book becomes a classic. <laughs> huh? A classic? You know, that stuff in little print with no pictures that nobody reads. <laughs> yeah, that's a classic. Well, Duffy, I'll, I'll call you back. Okay. Mr. Archer. Yeah, Eddie. You, you remember the fellow what sent in one of them new silver pennies instead of a dime for your book? Yeah. Brooke. Yeah, he returned the book. He wants his penny back. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Maybe ten cents is too much for the book. Yeah. Oh, no, no. The price is low enough. Yeah, I think that price is low enough, huh? Yeah, that's low enough. It's just the book ain't worth it. <laughs> and pray, how do you know? Did you read it? Did you read it? I wrote it. That's why I didn't read it. Fine, friend, you are. I can't spend a dime for one lousy book. Uh, just wait till uh, Paramount buys it. Mm. Duffy's first reader will be Paramount's last picture. Eddie, don't be so skeptic. Uh, wait until you see Ida Lupino in my picture. Ida Lupino? Certainly, I'm considering her for the part. Uh, who are you going to consider after she turns it down? Okay, forget it, Eddie. I'm a jerk. Okay, Eddie, I'm a jerk. Okay. <laughs> we, we agree on something. Uh, uh, let me tell you that this story is bound to make a great picture, you know. It's about love. Love, love. I hate love. Oh, Duffy, you of all people, rapping Cupid. What does it mean, love? I curse the day I ever whistled at a fella. <laughs> What's the matter? Did you have a fight with your boyfriend, Breckenbridge Hartsenfelder? <laughs> Archie. Do not mention the name Breckenbridge Hartsenfelder in the same breath with mine. That much wind I ain't got. <laughs> but what did he do to you? He is a faceless two-timer. Oh, other girl, hmm? Sunday, another girl. Monday, another girl. Tuesday, another girl. Thursday, another girl. What happened Wednesday? I had a date. <laughs> you give a guy sauce for the goose, he's gonna go out and take a gander. <laughs> But he kissed those ganders goodnight. Well, didn't you kiss your date goodnight? Purely for patriotic reasons. He was a sailor. <laughs> uh, you mean you wouldn't have kissed him if he was a civilian? Only if he was a citizen of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> or if he had his first papers. <clears throat> now, let me along, Miss Duffy, please. Sure, uh, hello, uh... Uh, what, what's the matter, Finnegan? Uh, you look closer. Oh, I'm full of soup. I've been eating soup all day. Soup? Why? Uh, I'm collecting empty tin cans for the salvage drive. Finnegan, uh, couldn't you think of any other way of doing it? Uh, I tried another way, Arch, but the tuna fish was just as bad. Uh, Finnegan, how much of the stuff did you eat? It's only my quota, 30 cans. Well, it's very patriotic, Finnegan, but uh, you know uh, you know what a uh, government uh, really needs these uh, tin cans. Uh, well, uh, as I understand it... 
the, the, they are endeavoring to obtain the labels to relieve the paper shortage. Uh, they want the tin to make into the steel. And uh, you know what steel becomes after it is molten. Tuna fish. <laughs> Yeah. The thing to do is to take the tins, clean them, flatten them out. Then the government takes them and they melt them, they smelt them, and then they turn them into munitions. Uh, they should have smelt them after the tuna fish was in there. <laughs> all right, Benny, and I'll uh, try to save all our tin cans for you then. Oh, thanks very much, Jack. Hey, uh, by the way, I hear you wrote a book. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, that seems kind of silly. Uh, ain't it cheaper to buy one? <laughs> Duffy, will you stop worrying about Breckenridge? <clears throat> How come you uh, never made a pass at our corner, Johnny Johnson, by the way? And uh, what is there about him to interest me? Well, he's wearing your favorite costume, pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, he ain't bad looking. Yeah, and he ain't married. Just your type. Hmm. Um... Uh... And Mr. Johnston. Yes? A man with your looks, uh, why is it you stay single? Well, Miss Duffy, why do you stay single? That is aside to the point. <laughs> I should think you could find, say, some nice girl, say, a nice, really pretty girl, say, one whose father owns this place. <laughs> Miss Duffy, your father owns this place. Johnny, is this a proposal? No. Well, you'll have to give me time to think it over. Go ahead and sing. I heard you cried last night And I know why I heard you cried last night and so did I Why did you make us part? I'm so alone Why did you take my heart? You didn't want it for your own And if you hadn't cared to make amends I might have never dared We'd be just friends So calm your fears Dry your tears Kiss the boy you adore Now you can smile tonight and cry no more And if you hadn't cared To make amends I might have never dared We'd be just friends So calm your fears and dry your tears Come kiss the boy you adore And cry no more <laughs> Travel. 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 Travel.
Your name begins with an A. What a coincidence. <laughs> hmm, well, shake hands with Aida Lupino. <laughs> well, uh, now leave it 
Princess Madeline brings you by Coco. <laughs> Again, page 19, you won't. If you are going to be a successful dollar, you got to spend dough. Remember the Chinese saying, one buck is worth a thousand words. Real do a expensive cocktail out. <laughs> will be as meticulous of choosing his mate as he will his underwear. Real Bree, the home of a very wealthy English chateau. He is sitting alone with his daughter. Oh, Mesa. My darling daughter. There's a shampoo, scalp treatment, and treatment, and moisturizer. Okay, I'll go. Lonely. If only heaven would send me a dream. Uh, good evening, lovely lady. My, you're a handsome man. <laughs> Who are you, fair stranger? What is thy name of you? <laughs> I am a nobody. Just call me Sir Wackenbach. Ha! Thank you. I must carry on. I must needs catch the nine o'clock tram. Oh, no. No, you can't. You must. I'll kill what myself. What will become of me and my father's fifty-four billion dollars? I'm sorry, but... Four billion dollars? There must be a later tram. So we see with what patriculosity our hero chose his mate. And now, we come to the big Listen, tonight, where are you going? Don't you like this picture? Well, Archie, I think it's a little too serious. You see, today Hollywood wants to do it. Well, uh, well, how do we do that? Well, I'm using the fire escape. You're on your own. Good night. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, this is horrible. And now on page 19, we will show you why our hero never lost the day. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Now, before we leave Duffy's Tavern, leave us for a couple of nickels in Duffy's Jukebox. Duffy's Jukebox, for the feet meet the feet. Well, the platter's spinning, the needle's in the groove. Here's the first number coming up.
Broadcast of Duffy's Tavern was produced in the United States of America. Cross. 